Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, you'll see how to assemble and process a panorama using the new Panorama Merge tool that is new in Lightroom 6 and Lightroom CC. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's look and see what we're going to do. This is a panorama and this is the one that we're going to assemble in this video. And it's made up of nine portrait orientation images that I shot in Oxford. Now, I also want to show you this panorama because this one's pretty amazing. This was made up of over 28 images. So I shot these in Rome and it's a 360 panorama, so it wraps all the way around. It took a little while to create. It probably took about 15 or 20 minutes to render. It was from high quality JPEG images, not DNG images. But this was all done inside Lightroom. And you can see that it is possible to assemble really quite large panoramas here in Lightroom. So let's get started. To create a panorama in Lightroom, you're going to start in the library module. So I'm here in the library module and I have a sequence of images that I shot as a panoramic sequence. So they go all the way down to here. I have the first one selected, so I'm going to shift click on the last one to select the entire sequence. And now I'll just right click and choose Photo Merge Panorama. Now this feature is new to Lightroom CC and Lightroom 6. So if you're working with an earlier version of Lightroom, say Lightroom 5 or 4, this feature won't be available to you. In that case, if you have Photoshop installed, you can choose Edit In and then Merge to Panorama in Photoshop. But that's not what we're doing today. We're doing the Photo Merge, the new tool. So I'm going to click on Panorama. The Panorama Merge Preview dialog will then open and you can select the options. So spherical, cylindrical and perspective are the options. Well, this is the perspective one and it gives you this sort of classic bow tie effect where the middle image is central in the image and it's actually sort of square and all the others bow tie out from it. But if you were to apply an auto crop to this, it might look a whole lot better and it does. It's a really good projection for this particular sequence. But let's have a look at the others. Cylindrical and spherical have to do with mapping the panorama onto a sphere. And you can see here that we're getting this sort of bowed out look. It's not an unattractive look. It is one of the options. So let's have a look at spherical. And spherical is similar to cylindrical. It's just a little bit squashed up. So cylindrical is going to give us perhaps a bigger final image. It's an attractive option. I think I'll go with cylindrical. At this stage, I have a couple of options. I could go to merge straight away or I could apply an auto crop on this. Now that loses me quite a bit of the image and I may prefer to not auto crop this and perhaps take it to Photoshop and fill in these missing areas. I'm actually going to opt for auto crop, so let's click auto crop and let's click merge. And now Lightroom's going ahead and actually creating the panorama. What we got earlier was a preview and now it's actually doing the work of creating a panorama. This panorama is going to appear in the same folder as the original images. It's going to have the same name as the first selected image in the sequence and it's going to have some extra letters in its file name just indicating that it is a panorama. And it's going to be able to be edited and dealt with just exactly the same way as any image in Lightroom. So we'll just wait as the panorama continues to be processed. And if you wanted to make some sort of long-term comparisons, you could go back after you've made this first panorama and re-render it with a different projection. And so you could maybe compare them or have multiple panoramas from a single sequence. So we're just waiting for this one to appear. We're in added order, so let's go back to capture time because then it's going to appear alongside the images. So here's the panorama that we created today. These are older versions of it created in Photoshop and in one of them I actually put this building on top of the rest of it. But for today we're just going to work with this one, so let's just go and open it now in the develop module. The first thing we're going to do is straighten this because it's very, very crooked. And you can see that the crop rectangle is still in place. So we're still working with the same crop as we had inside the panorama merge. So if we want to recrop it, we can do so. We haven't actually lost any of this image in the process. We can make our own choices still. So I'm actually going to crop it a bit 
larger than it came out of the Panorama Merge cropped because I can take off some of these side bits. So I'm really more interested in the main building here. When I'm finished, I'm just going to click Done. And then we can go ahead and process the image as we would any other image in Lightroom. So I'm going to bring down the highlights. I'm going to bring down the whites. You can see I've got a little bit of area up here that I would still need to crop away. I'll open up the shadows. I'm going to shift double click on the blacks to set a black point in the image automatically. That's a key combination that you can use. Double click on blacks and or whites and you'll automatically set the correct black and white point for the image. I'm going to increase clarity and increase our vibrance a little bit. I kind of like the vibrance but I think the grass is a little bit green so I'm going to go to the color channel. I'm just going to grab green and just decrease the saturation and it's probably a little bit in the yellows as well yep, just to kill that grass a little bit and I still think I need to deal with this crop a bit better there we are so there's a panorama merge created in Lightroom. You can merge a large number of images. As I said before, I've merged something like 28 images into a panorama. It took a little while to do. And to do this all in Lightroom and not have to go to Photoshop to do it is a bonus. So here is the new panorama merge tool in Lightroom. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and think about commenting. I love to hear your comments. You might also want to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.